After initial hiccups of filing his nomination, uh, Francis Adainimo, aspiring MP, a parliamentary candidate for Mampong, and a former MP uh, for that constituency, uh, finally uh, filed his nomination. He's here with me in the studio to talk to us about it. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for your time. Uh, so you finally filed your nomination. What changed? Yes. Well, thank you very much, uh, Stephen. Uh, I was able to file my nomination mm. on the last day of the period. That was... Thursday, February 20th. And that was on the instructions of the regional chairman of our party, Mr. Bernard Njibo Siakun, popularly known as Chama to me. me. Mm. I mean, having experienced some difficulties at my constituency in picking my nomination forms and then attempting to file. So when I narrated the story to him, uh, he agreed with me that I could do so mm at the regional secretary, right? And I did it last week, Thursday. So right. I'm in the race now, and the next phase of the process is the vetting, uh, which we are waiting for the schedule that will come out from the regional secretary. Okay. So before the vetting, have you started campaigning yet? Well, of course. I mean, once nomination got open, you you have you can't wait because mm -hmm. the period is just about three months. So, how's your campaign going? What is your strategy? I mean, I'm asking all of this on the back of the fact that you have been uh, MP for the area yes. before. Yes, you know this is limited. This election is limited to delegates, mm. right? Right. Who so, are pulling so station executives. You need, you need so to we first get know the them. mandate of your delegates. Yes, definitely, we know them. The total number of delegates in my constituency is about 650. And we can identify them by name, by face, and by voice. Mm. So we reach out to them. And by loyalty? Or oh, that is not guaranteed? Well, it is. Because in some cases, can be in, tricky. In some cases, it is guaranteed. Mm. In some cases, it can be tricky. Okay. But notwithstanding, it is up to you, the candidate, mm. on how mm. the strategy you use to galvanize your support and the vote. But let me point out this, Steve, to your cherished uh, viewers. The decision in making or, or the decision to choose who becomes the parliamentary candidate, in my view, does not rely only with the delegates. Yes, the delegates will go out to thumbprint on the day of the election. But prior to that, the delegates also live with amongst the yeah. citizens of the of the constituency mm -hmm. so they also listen to them and know their preference so you cannot limit your campaign to, to only the 650 delegates, delegates. delegates you mm -hmm. would have to go out of that of that box speak to other opinion leaders in the society i get the impression that's what you're doing yes it should be part of it mm -hmm. but if you concentrate your campaign on only the delegates i mean yes some delegates may, be, may not be influenced by what the larger mm -hmm. populace will be saying to mm -hmm. them that, look, we prefer candidate A to candidate B or to candidate C. But I'm, by majority, I'm, I'm curious. Uh, you've been MP before. I, I did say it. But why do you want to represent your constituency again? Well, that is a salient question to ask me. Anybody who has led any group of people and thereafter there is a call on you to consider running again, then it speaks volumes. It means one, in my view, the relationship that existed between you and your followers or on the constituency. At the time you were the MP, they really appreciated it. Two, the amount of work, your performance as MP they also appreciated it. So they look at this and they compare and contrast the quality of leadership that you offered mm -hmm. whilst you were in the office and then the leadership that they are experiencing now. And for me, that is where the whole motivation is coming from. Mm -hmm. But above all, it is the character. The character of the person leading. And I believe in the character based on the principles of hard work Honesty, humility. Mm. So, so uh, I mean, is this to raise questions about the leadership of the current MP? Well, what I'm, saying, what, what, what I'm saying is that having spoken to many of my constituents who have called on me to consider a comeback, they, in their view, think that they have compared 
the viscosity of two liquids. One is more viscous than the other. And so um, they think that I can offer a better job. Based on what I was doing for them during my administration, the first time establishing a party, a, a MP's office, where every constituent, whether you are a member of my party or a non-member of my party, you could reach out to the MP. You know, in terms of education, ability to organize free vacation classes for over thousands mm. of students who would attend, and that also helped them in their examinations. So they compare all this, and then they think that you were performing better. And then in terms of your personal relationship with the people, it's better. That which was is what you better. refer to as character, right? That is correct. Mm -hmm. So I know that uh, the issue of vigilantism has become a big deal. And uh, Media General, as you may have followed, the launch of our election command center are pledging to peace. What is your own pledge to, to, to peace when it comes to your campaign and how uh, decent you want to go about it? Steve, I pledge to peace and civility in my campaign, in my constituency. I also urge every contestant in these primaries within the party, in the 168 constituencies where the primaries are taking place. I know in some constituencies, some candidates are going on opposed. But I'm assuming that there is a contest in all the 168 constituencies with the exception of Aya also West Wogon. I will encourage and entreat every contestant to ensure that there is peace and civility in our campaign. This is a family game. It's a family game being played. One side will definitely score the goal. So let us allow fair play, even playing field. Let's allow transparency. Whoever emerges, that person has the duty to bring all the losers and everybody to back Canada. to the family. Then we have a, a major task ahead of us towards the 2020 December elections. But let me use this opportunity also to commend the media general. In fact, I just came in and realized that there's a launch of uh, elections command Center. over here. So it's a good move where you are entreating everybody to pledge to, to peace. peace yeah. This is one country, the only country we have, yeah. the four corners. Elubo to Hamile, Hamile to Kulungugu, Kulungugu to Aplau, and back to Elubo. That is the four corners of the land we have. So we should live together. We should go through this process. First, within my party, we should ensure that the elections are, the primaries are conducted peacefully. peacefully. We will have all our candidates. Thereafter, we will engage our brothers and sisters in the other parties. So I need you to, I mean, I take your pledge again sincerely, but I need you to face our camera, uh, mention your name and pledge to peace before we let you go. I, Honorable Francis Adainimo of Mampong Constituency, do pledge to peace in this year's elections within the primaries in MPP and the general elections come December 7th, 2020. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honorable Adainimo. We're grateful uh, for that pledge.